your cash on cash looks so much better when you have the seller financing because you know you're coming to the table with less money down but the seller financing cannot be so expensive that it kills your debt coverage ratio and makes it you're unable to sustain even the first mortgage first off typically you you say it the right way is the seller willing to get creative and then you sit back and shut up and that's the code and then uh you know they'll ask you well what what do you mean well you know how about taking back some form of paper some and never call it a second mortgage the issues with the lenders what they don't want is for anyone to have foreclosure rights behind them they don't want the seller to end up owning this and they become partners with the seller they haven't vetted the seller they haven't underwritten the seller they've underwritten you and so that's their biggest fear. Now, the note that they sent over that your that your um, that the seller's attorney drafted. Okay, big deal. A note's a two-page document. It lays out all the terms. It's not the note that's at issue. It's going to be the mortgage that's at issue. The mortgage is that document that connects the note to the property. And that's the that's the thing that ties the two. Without the mortgage, the note is just a personal note. Mm -hmm. The mortgage secures it to the real estate, and that's what the bank is going to have an issue with. So they asked you, they asked if they could use their lawyer to write the note. Okay, fine, no big deal. Anybody can write a note. It's what the terms are in the mortgage that the bank, your lender, is going to want to see. That's that's the concern. But the thing is, the entity, if you want to sign that in a, in a way that protects you and it's not a personal guarantee, you say XYZ LLC promises to pay. And then down at the bottom under the signature block, and everybody understand this. If he signs his name over his name, he's signing personally. If he signs his name and it's sandwiched between the name of the LLC, his signature, his name, and then his title within the LLC, that is telling the world that he has he is not signed personally. He's signed on behalf of the entity. And it's the entity that uh that is responsible. So yeah, my advice to you is not to sign that that personal one. Um, put it in the name of your LLC. Um, if they want, you know, they say, Are you signing personally? You know, it's if they're tying the mortgage to the real estate, no, I'm not signing personally. You got the real estate to back it up. You see, and just so everybody understands, I mean, this is full disclosure, folks. I mean, you, you, you pay for the real deal. When when it was 2008, the heyday, we did a seller a, sec, a seller mortgage. Bank said no to the second. Seller said you got to sign it personally and personally guarantee it. Five of us signed it personally. The property went back, back to the bank. Ten years later, a lawyer from Cleveland comes looking for all five of us. Okay? And he says, I want you, I want you, I want you. And now it was, it was when we signed it originally, it was $350,000. Now with penalties and interest, it was over $750,000. And I'm the only one of the five that has a pot to piss in. The rest of the guys have nothing. And I sign personally, joint and severally. They come after me. I said to the guy, hey, can we strike a deal? What I mean is what, what will make me an offer. I said, I'll give you a hundred thousand bucks. And he goes, I'll release you for a hundred thousand bucks. I said, thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'll wire you the money in three days. Give me the paperwork done and over with. So yeah. So that's why I tell all my students don't sign personally. Just don't do it. You don't want that headache 10 years down the road.